thank you. I wish you had set me on fire. <laughs> um, I'm not going to do a caper as such. I'm a practicing artist and I'm going to show a video of um, some of one of my videos. I do clown performance, but it's not traditional clown performance. Um, it's in relation to queer performance, but I'll talk more about it after I'll show the video first. The video is 3 minutes 24 seconds long, so it's not over long, and it's called Wank. <laughs> because obviously it's, it appears quite graphic at first, but there's actually nothing graphic or pornographic about, you know, it's, it's playing with the blue, honestly. Um, and, and the whole idea of a clown is something that has so much baggage attached to it anyway, that it's sort of deviant by nature. And I expect if I asked everybody sitting in the thing tonight, I'd have probably very, very few people that think it's the happy childhood clown entertainer and more people that would think of a clown as a scary, deviant thing, that, you know, something to be scared of or something to be feared. Um, circus historian Bruce Feeler wrote about clowns 
Though some people have always found clowns disturbing because of the seedy surroundings of the big top or reliance on physical humour, now many feel that behind the face of the clown there may be a rapist waiting to pounce. And this idea of the clown being a sexual deviant is really strong. And there was um, John Wayne Gacy, who was the um, serial killer who dressed up as a clown, and there was a lot of the sexual element to his crimes. Um, and it's quite a, a recurring subject with clowns. And I've connected clowns with queer performance largely because of drag, because drag has been written about by many people as, as existing on a spectrum between glamour and clown. So clowns are sort of present within queer performance, but they're not the dominant force, because when you say drag, you tend to think of the glamorous drag and the, the female impersonation, where clown drag is actually not about gender, it's, it's just an expression of deviance. You know, neither non-specifically gendered de deviance, more just generalised sexual deviance. Um, because of this positioning of the, the clown drag being a smaller group than queer performance in general, there's a very few, um, but there's plenty of um, queer performers that do consider themselves clowns, like Ryan Stiles, Dickie Bow, and others. Um, but they're not the do you know when you say queer performance, they're not the dominant thing in it. Um, it seems to me that it becomes this sort of there's layers to other. <coughs> There's not just normative performance and other or queer performance. There's actually doubly sidelined performance and doubly marginalised performance or layers of it. So it goes on and on and on. So you might end up with somebody sitting in a room on their own with a camera um, performing, whether that's a performance or not, when it's just to a camera. Um, and that is still a, a queer performance, but because it's not in a queer performance venue and it's so there's, there's this sort of, we're talking tonight about sidelined and about um, deviance. Um, and I suppose my point that I'm trying to make is that that, that is a very grey area and there's levels. And um, in the queer performance scene at the moment, there's a lot of people working in queer performance um, who could quite possibly just well-talented, skilled people who could be working in regular theatres and doing all sorts of all sorts of whatever they choose to do. So it's less of a Victorian idea of deviance where you know physicality says that you have to work. Um, you don't have any choices, is what I'm saying, I suppose. Um, the choices are there and there's layers and layers of this otherness. Um, and Foucault touched on this so I mentioned Foucault and uh, touched on this um, with his writing about the Ship of Fools, where there was the mad people that were kept at the edges of the city, and then there was the mad, foreign, and anything else that you could throw at them people who were put onto ships that really never docked anywhere. So it's these in-between spaces where there's sort of the acceptable other people who are just sort of kept close to the normative, and then there's this sort of the, the wild and dangerous part, which is, you know, at sea. Um, and I suppose I'm interested in, the, in those and with the ship of fools, it's the fools of the madness we get back to clowns. Um, and so that's my point, I think. Okay. Thank you.